In this video, we're going to discuss the female reproductive cycle. The female reproductive cycle is also called the menstrual cycle. It's a 28-day cycle that prepares the female for pregnancy. It can be divided into three main phases. The first phase is the follicular phase, and this consists of the first 13 days of the cycle. During this phase, FSH and LH are being released from the anterior pituitary, and they stimulate folliculogenesis, which is the maturation of the follicle. The follicle, in response, will secrete estrogen. Now, estrogen it will have a function in developing the endometrium. So as its levels rise, you can see on this diagram how the endometrium levels will start to increase over time. In addition, as the follicle is developing, the primary oocyte within the follicle is going to complete meiosis I to form the secondary oocyte. Now, the effects of estrogen changes during the follicular phase. Initially, when the levels of estrogen are low, estrogen has a negative feedback effect on the anterior pituitary gland. This results in an inhibition in the secretion of LH and FSH. However, as the levels of estrogen gradually rises, at some point it reaches a threshold level. At this threshold, estrogen now becomes a positive feedback stimulator of the anterior pituitary gland. This causes a rapid rise in LH and FSH levels. And you can see that in this diagram, right? Notice that at the beginning of the diagram, LH, FSH, and estrogen levels are all fairly low. Gradually, as estrogen levels rise, you can see how the newly developed endometrium starts to grow. And at some point, once the estrogen reaches a high level, you have this spike in the LH and FSH levels. That surge in the LH and FSH levels is the second phase, which is ovulation. Ovulation only lasts a single day. And this release of LH, this spike, is called the LH surge. It causes the follicle to rupture, releasing the secondary oocyte. Now, the remaining days of the menstrual cycle, days 15 to 28, are the luteal phase. The luteal phase is named because the remaining follicle, now that the oocyte is no longer present, forms what is called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone. Progesterone has an important role in that it will further prepare the endometrium for implantation by the blastocyst. So you can see in this diagram that as the progesterone is secreted, the endometrium becomes thicker and more vascularized. Um, and the progesterone is also important for maintaining the endometrium. So as you can also see on this diagram, if fertilization does not occur, gradually the corpus luteum will degrade. When it degrades, progesterone secretion stops, and soon after, the endometrium will be shedded. So again, on the diagram, you can see how at the end of the luteal phase, the progesterone levels drop off and the endometrium starts the shedding process. And that overlaps into the start of the follicular phase where you can see the shedding process is finishing. Okay, so this describes the process when fertilization does not occur. So let's look at how to change if fertilization happens. So as we know, fertilization involves in the fusion of an egg cell and a sperm cell. When that happens, you form a zygote that will undergo several developmental stages to form the blastocyst. The blastocyst is what implants into the endometrium. When the blastocyst is implanted into the endometrium, it will begin to secrete human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG. HCG has an important role in that it maintains the corpus luteum. So since the corpus luteum is being maintained, it will continue to secrete progesterone, which will maintain the endometrium so that the blastocyst, when it's implanted, can develop. Now, eventually, over time, the placenta is going to develop, and the placenta will actually take over the role of secreting progesterone. So when the placenta develops, the corpus luteum will degrade. And you can see in this diagram this process. So once fertilization occurs, 
you can see how the levels of human chorionic gonadotropin rises and at some point it drops off. When it drops off is when the placenta has formed and taken over the role of progesterone secretion. And you can also see how during this process, the levels of estrogen and progesterone continually rise. Okay, so this is the description of the female reproductive cycle and what happens when fertilization does not occur as well as what happens when fertilization does occur.